send out tweets. Um, and make sure that everything's working. Let's unmute my thing. Do I have audio? And do. Ha ha. All right. So we should be good. Hello, everyone. This is Chris Ingerson, and it is. I was going to say October, but it's November 7th, and this is the November 7th TechQuest dev stream. So, today we are going to be um, polishing up combat a little bit more, uh, as well as, assuming that we can actually get through what I want to do on combat today, um, we will start reforming the uh, music manager, which is an ancient class from the olden days before I had any idea what I was doing. Um, so you, if, when we eventually get to that, you will hear me complain about it because it's a functional class. I'm just going to say that it's a functional class, kind of not, it's not broken, I suppose is what I should say. Um, all right. I'm also going to go ahead and mute audio and, uh, maximize on play. So let's go ahead and say, uh, hit. So since last week, I have sort of fixed the overlapping problem. Um, I have come up with a way for it to largely avoid attacks, or rather other attacks. Although there is some there is some odd discrepancies there. Like it doesn't seem to stop them from overlapping completely. It seems like sometimes they can sort of spill in uh, attacks can spill into one another still, but only barely. I've not seen them overlap yet. So yeah, you, uh, hold on. Obviously that didn't work either. Um, so you can see here that the attack is kind of clipping in, but I haven't seen one that's actually been overlaid yet. Um, I just, I don't quite understand why these ones are accepting it as okay. Um, they shouldn't really be able to work at all if any part of them overlaps. Eh. So I think I'm going to have to have some sort of like, uh, padding, um, just to artificially space them out a little bit more. Um, and I thought that I added... A little debug thing or a little uh option to ignore this particular rec transform but it looks like that's not taking so yay um but for the most part you can see that attacks no longer fully overlap like they used to be able to do um ah, dang it um so we're just gonna pick up from there and once we get done with that um because now i actually do have a reliable way of screen space calculating uh, bounds for Rex. Uh, we're going to do a subtle little thing for combo labels because right now they're a little too snappy, um, uh, meaning that they basically go from not invisible but not set um, to having whatever the combo that you've displayed is when you get one. Um, and I would like to make that more of a smooth transition as opposed to just like a pop in affair. Um, all right. So this is the current code that I'm using to check if we overlap. Um, what I do is I pass in, I guess we should go all the way up, shouldn't we? Um, so we have this start attack function. This is what calls the, um, well, this is what initialized the actual attack pattern stuff. Um, it's what tells the attack pattern to start generating attacks and listening for attack inputs and all that. Um, and when uh, I added a little parameter here at the end called occupied areas, and these are supposed to be rec transforms that attacks are, are not meant to be um, able to enter. Basically, they're, they're, um, they're rec transforms that are already occupied, and we don't want them to overlap with them. Um, and it should be setting them. And once that's done, it goes to the regular attack coroutine, uh, during which I have added this for loop that loops through all of those occupied areas and says, okay, does the attack that I've just generated um, overlap in screen space with these occupied areas? Um, if, if true, then we're going to set overlaps equal to be true. Um, and then, you know, we'll get to our while loop. Um, I've also added a, if overlaps is equal to false here, um, mostly, I guess I could actually shorten that and just say, if not overlaps. Um, Mostly because I don't feel the need to go through a second for loop if I already have set overlaps to be true. So um, I'm just going to do that only if it overlaps is false. Save a little bit of overhead there. Um, and I'm also thinking that I might I might end up doing um, some sort of caching for this, but probably not for now. Um, mostly because every time I do an overlap screen space, 
I look at this, you can see that it's going to calculate the corners on both recs. So that's four vector threes that have to be generated per rec um, per check. Um, so very quickly, that can add up to a lot of overhead that doesn't necessarily need to happen, um, especially because I think what I can do there is basically just have um, their corners be cached for at least a frame. Um, the reason that I don't cache them outright is because, well, some attacks do move. So it's it, it's hard to justify caching them when they might not be not, they might not be valid. Um, uh, in any case, so uh, I've also added another for loop in here. Um, it's basically the same thing as up here, except um, we're just checking our uh, occupied areas uh, in front of again our attacks. Um, and I would think that this would work, except it doesn't seem to be. So I'm actually going to go up here, and do we still have? Oh, we don't. This is going to be interesting then. I don't know what this is going to do, um, but it should give us some sense of it. Um, so I'm actually going to go to Rec Transform Extensions. And uh, previously when I was trying to determine if uh, these recs were overlapping, I was using a non-screen space solution, and that actually didn't end up working because um, sometimes I might have arbitrary rotation on these rec transforms, so I can't just do a straight up X and Y comparison or X and Z comparison. Um, so instead, I hold on, let's go up here. I have basically converted those coordinates into camera space or screen space, um, so that it will always be correct. Um, X on camera is always the same X, no matter what the value is, because it's well, it's calculated based on the camera's projection. Um, so real quick, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Are those all correct? Haha. So now. Um, when we get to that cutscene uh, and the attacks start showing up, we should be able to see some debugs of um, the actual wrecks that are being compared. Now, they're probably not going to line up exactly with the actual wreck transforms, um, but they should match them. And what I mean by that is, um, even though they're not going to be in the exact same space, uh, I guess it's not vertically or horizontally, Z-axis, um, Chances are they will at least be somewhat correct in terms of what they look like from the front. Um, so we can use that to determine if they are actually overlapping or if they're doing something weird. All right, so let's go ahead and hit. Okay. Get our fade in. Let's go ahead and do a battle again. All right. Oh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do a one combo so that we can check this. Ah, that would that would be the problem now, wouldn't it? <laughs> I didn't think about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oops. Um. Shoot. That did not work as expected. Um. Although it's interesting, they do appear they do appear to be drawing correct. Oh wait, no. I bet that's because I'm actually doing the corners, aren't I? Yes! Okay, uh, I did that wrong then. Let's go ahead and stop that. Uh, I need to put this after the for loop. So this for loop here is um, basically converting those corners into screen space. I did that after I did the draw lines, so that would be why they were doing the actual correct uh, correct positioning on those wrecks. Um, but I'm more interested in knowing what their screen space coordinates are. So let's see if those overlap. <laughs> <sighs> oh, almost forgot. Almost forgot to turn on Nightbot. Because I keep forgetting to do that. Because I'm a terrible streamer. <laughs> As is evidenced by the fact that I didn't stream last weekend. To be fair, I was out of town. Um, I will stream this coming weekend, but then I will not stream the following weekend because I will be in Canada. So... November and October just have been terrible for me to stream on the weekends. And I always feel bad when that happens. Um, but, you know, real life tends to happen. Real life, that's an annoying thing to say. Um, travel tends to happen. Okay, so let's get a combo going. <sighs> nope, you still did it. And again, we, we have like a slight overlap here, but not... Not a full overlap. I don't know what's going on there. That's super weird. Um, in any case, we should be able to see our debug now. Um, 
Oh, that's not... Yeah, that that square over there is not encouraging. Wow, that is really weird. I... Huh. That might be because of the fact that the main camera isn't looking at that. Hmm, I didn't think about that. So this combo label here is actually... It's a part of the... Um, uh, the combat menu. It's not a part of the, the combat, I guess, battle menu is how I would phrase that, but that's also a terrible and awkward thing to say. Um, so if we zoom in here, this is our battle canvas. It's an actual world space canvas, um, but the combo labels and the health labels and all those, um, those are, those are not world space. Those are, those are um, overlays. So, well, actually they're not overlays. They are screen space camera um, set up. Um, but I'm not entirely sure why, yeah, okay. Now I, I am guessing that it's because, um, this camera, which is the main camera, uh, can't see them. So, crap. That's not good. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do about that. Um, so mixing and matching doesn't really work, at least not very well. Um, I might be able to access the camera on UI instead. Um, I, I think my UI might have a reference to its camera. Well, at the very least it's canvas does. Um, so let me think, uh, I suppose I could, oh geez, um, I suppose I could try to basically check if this camera can even see the rect, and if not, I don't want to assume. That's not very good. Um, hmm. Okay. Uh, what to do about this then? Could I just use the UI camera? I mean, surely not. I feel no, that wouldn't work. Um, so here's here's the problem. Here's our UI camera way out here. It's a giant um, orthogonal camera. And it's just not going to accurately give me what I need. I would have to basically calculate the um, rect, or the, not the rect, um, the corners of each rect individually per camera. And that's not super great. So uh, one option that I could do is move the combo labels into combat or into tq combat so the actual combat class um basically making them non-screen space and allowing me to position them a little bit more creatively in the world um that might be preferable anyway just because that means that i could do i could do world space combos um or if i have different different um attacks I could even have the combo not just be up here. It could actually be, you know, like every time someone gets hit, a combo comes up. Um, so it's not a terrible idea then. Um, mostly because I, I really don't know a good way that I could uh, mix and match UI and uh, main camera screen space calculations. So, oh boy. Um, yeah. All right. Let's... Um, Let's try that. So let's go to, let's see, uh, where are you? Combat view. I'm gonna go up to, let's see, combat info area, combat label area, um, hint area, da, 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 da. let's see, there should be rec transforms everywhere around here. Uh, let's see. Ah, there we are, player combo background. Patterns start right, right, right. That's me passing that in to try and get it to do that. So we do a local scale. Right, right. Yeah. 
I guess the reason that I that I originally put the combo labels in this particular script instead of TQ Combat was a kind of like separation of of UI and functionality. Um, I was trying to keep the UI separate, but I don't think I can really do that here. Um, all right. So, oh boy, this is ugh, this is gonna be fun. Um, all right, let's go ahead and go to our combat. And I go up here. Let's see. Battle canvas. All right. Uh, let's grab our resources. Click you, click you. Pull in our UI so that I can actually pull in our uh, combat view. Let's see, view dash combat. All right, there we are. Let's drag that in. We'll turn that on so we can see everything. And let's see, player in combat area, uh, combo labels, here we are. I think these are scaled to be zero, is that right? Oh, oh no, they're just, okay, never mind. Yeah, um, this is actually one of the things that we're going to address today. Um, if I look at this, you can see that there's an empty texture here. Uh, it's, an, it's just an, ah, an empty image. There is actually a label, um, and if I typed in it, you would see that it actually expands. Um, but... This this is a fun thing about how UGUI works. Um, sprite or images cannot be smaller than the sprite that they uh, are using. So, for example, um, solid is marked at eight by eight, I believe. Let me check that. I'm kind of curious. I think it's an eight by eight. Yeah, eight by eight. Um, so even though that this background is about 20 by 20, um, I couldn't actually shrink it down past eight by eight, which means there's always going to be some part of it that's on screen. Um, because that's just for some reason how Unity's UI works. Um, so to get around that, what I would normally do is I would actually scale these down to zero, zero, zero. Um, so that it's invisible essentially. Uh, but with a screen or with a world space approach, I won't really need to do that. And... Instead, I'm going to use canvas groups to fade the alpha um, to make it a much more nicer transition. Um, okay, so... Cat? Yes, I see you, cat. All right, uh, so we're going to move those combos away from it. Um, I guess we can just try to, like, straight up pull this. I don't know how well this is going to go, but we'll find out. Continue. Let's zero all of this out. Freaking Unity 2017.2. Who thought this was a good idea to not make fields highlight? One, one, one. All right, let's take a look at this. All right, now where are you? That's a very good question. It is apparently somewhere stupid. Um, so let's go ahead and zero out position Y. Oh my, it's big. No, it is 20 units, I suppose. Um, is that really? <laughs> Seriously? Why is it 20? Ah, it's because I got to scale all this stuff, isn't it? Uh, let's see. I'm guessing 12. Actually, I'm probably going to have to go to like 8 for our font size. Um, background, height of 20. Uh, let's go ahead and enter in a times 10. Okay, so we can see at least how how large that is. Wow, that's still ridiculous. Um, we're not scaled, are we? Nope. Cool, cool. It's just that big, huh? Fair enough. Um, how on earth are you... You have to be scaled. Something weird's going on. That makes no sense. Um, so if I make you six... Wow. I can't too... I can't go much smaller. Um, huh. So we're doing preferred size. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
Ha! Thank you, Warner. And welcome, everyone. And funny enough, I am doing UI work. <laughs> and I do hate it. Apparently, I was just uh, not being truthful before. Uh, so let's see. How are we going to get you to work properly? I suppose the easiest thing actually would just be to uh, start from scratch. So let's go ahead and do this. Do an empty game object. Let's scale it. Uh, let's go ahead and add a UI image. Wow, that is big. Okay. Don't need you to be so big. Uh, let's change that. Make it a solid. Oops. Solid. There we are. And let's see here. We're going to want to change this to... What color was this? Grab this. Go back here. Okay, so we want that sort of semi-transparent. Um background just so that it, uh, one, makes the text a lot more legible, uh, and two, um, means that our font won't look incredibly dumb against the wall. Um, I feel like my Streamlabs stuff is broken right now. Hmm. Because I'm not seeing... Oh, no, no, there it is. Ah! It's working! Success! Alright, in any case, uh, so let's go ahead and add a label. So we're going to go to UI, text my pro text. It's going to be massive because they always are. Uh, let's change this to our 8-bit font. Uh, let's see. 8 is probably good. Let's go ahead and center it. Man, it is still way too big. Um, what am I going to do about this? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, let's see. Hey, my download speed is really, really slow. I have fun since the commander. I hope you watch your stream later. <laughs> well, I'll be, I mean, I'll be up probably for like three hours because my dev streams go incredibly long now. Because <laughs> it apparently takes me that long to do anything. Um, but in any case, thanks for the host, man. Uh, Alright, so we're going to call this label. Eh, we'll probably call this uh, player combo label. Uh, let's see, we'll call this background. And we'll call this combo area. Combo. Or combop. Combo area. Or aria. I can't type tonight. Or ever, apparently. Alright, uh, so we're going to do what we were doing before. Um, we're going to change this background so that it will dynamically scale with our text content. Um, so we're going to go ahead and say layout, horizontal layout group, uh, do child control size, and then let's see here. We're going to go ahead and do layout again. Content size fitter, horizontal fit of preferred size, and vertical fit of preferred size. Um, so now you can see that our um, our rect for our background is actually going to expand with our text. If I change this, it'll shrink with it. Um, so I can see whatever that is, but it'll work. Uh, okay. So how do we want to handle this? Um, let's go ahead and give this our sort of like placeholder of times 10 for our combo. Um, let's shrink you down to six. It's still not good enough. Um, how about, I really don't want to scale this. Um, <laughs> man, am I going to have to go to like incredibly tiny fonts? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, my, oh, nope. I think we're running into our background problem. Yeah, so it won't actually shrink down to be this size because the the sprite itself that I'm using for my background is too large. Because that's just how Unity decided things should work, which means that I have to scale. Um, so I could shrink my font down to like size 1, and you can see that this square is not getting any smaller. It's just not going to happen. Um, God, that's annoying. I don't even think that I can really make one smaller than that. Um, I guess let's try, just out of curiosity. Show Explorer. Let's go ahead and open up Photoshop real quick. So I'm basically going to make a duplicate solid that's two pixels by two pixels. Um, I, that's not really going to help. We're still working on scales too small um, for it to really do anything. 
I'm really not a fan of how world space canvases work in Unity. They kind of suck. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do grab you, pull you in here. Let's go ahead and move in. Nope. Unless it doesn't want to. You're going to work with me. There we go. Go ahead and zoom in here. Uh, we're going to trim this down to just two by two. Let's go ahead and save this out as solid small.png. Um, Okay, good. I was going to say, is it not going to put it back to where it was? Uh, we'll just save that out. Hit OK. Okay, so we should get a new sprite here. Let's go ahead and make this a sprite. Um, I think UI is what we're going to use that for. Uh, let's see. Don't need to worry about alpha. There is no alpha. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Filter mode point. Don't really care about anything else. So. Oh, good. All right, uh, so now if I swap this background out, we should see it shrink a little bit more. There we go. So fun little fact for the night, uh, if you're doing anything with Unity UI, you can't go smaller than the actual sprite used to make the background. It sucks. All right, um, God, that's still annoying because I can't, I can't make it vertically smaller. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go one by one just to see if I can. I'm legitimately curious. I actually don't I actually don't think that we can. Um, I think it's gonna be bumped up to two by two. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Alright, uh let's go ahead and turn off compression. Maybe that'll help. Nope. Okay, yeah. So you can't do one by one. Um I guess that makes sense. Everything's in power of two for textures. So alright. Well, I guess we'll have to live with um, two by twos. Cat, I see you. So let's go ahead and step backwards, make this a full two by two texture again. Go back to Unity, let that re-import. All right, so great. We're gonna have to try to make lemonade out of, not even lemons, limes. No one likes limes. Uh, let's see. So combo area, da, 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 battle canvas. Can I make you work for me? Actually, hold on. Ah, there it is. So I am scaling these. Well, then I guess I just got to live with it. So we're going to go ahead and do 0 0.01, 0 0.01, Ooh. 0 0.01, 0 0.01. All right. Um, that does mean that I can actually bump this back up to, I don't know, 42. Eh, that seems fine. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and add some padding here to our horizontal layout group. Uh, I don't know what I was doing before. I'm guessing, oh, 10. There we go. So 10 by 10 by 10 by 10. All right. So now I do have this dynamically resizing uh, combat label. And we're going to position it somewhere in the world. Hmm. I'm guessing back here for now. So let's go ahead and say, we'll say player. And let's go ahead and slide the entire combo area back. So, oh, that's interesting. The rec transform doesn't move in the Z with me. Uh, let's see. Uh, so that's Z of two. Can we do 2.25? Yep, that seems right. Maybe a little bit further back. 2.5? Nope, not that far. 2.4. So it's close to the it's close to the wall without being inside of it. Um, all right. So the player one is going to be offset by mm, that much. Mm, that much. Let's put you there. Cool. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. Slide this over, and we will go ahead and rename this to be enemy. Go ahead and call this enemy combo label. And now we're going to get to begin the wonderful and totally not arduous process of um, converting our combo labels over to the combat system instead of the UI. Ugh, lovely. All right. Um, who the heck are you? Hmm. 
Okay. I have no idea why that's there. That's kind of weird. Uh, must have been left over. All right, uh, let's go ahead and save that real quick. Let's go to our script next. So what we need to do now is basically um, take all of the functionality that we have in combat view for showing and hiding and doing everything with combo labels um, and move that into TQ combat. And once we have that, we'll be able to test it real quick to make sure that everything you know is behaving as expected. Um, wow, there is so much crap. Why do I even have that? <laughs> uh, let's see. We have check input. Uh, oh, good. I was going to say, really hope that's not. Uh, I think it is. All right. Um, so we're basically going to want to grab this. Of combo labels, show combo labels. I think we want this all. Let's go ahead and grab that. I'm going to dump this into TQ Combat. Uh, let's see, private void, private void, private void. We'll probably put this in public for now. I don't think we'll need it to be in public forever, but for now we'll put it there. Uh, let's see, refresh equipment. So let's go ahead and put it here. All right. So before we do anything else, I probably should actually grab what we need from there. Um, so we're going to need combo label area, which, funny enough, is not actually what we're going to do anymore. So, well, mm, no, mm, no, that's not what we're going to do. Um, so before what I would do is I would basically just disable the game object that had that was the parent of the uh, combo labels, both for the player and the um, the enemy. But we don't really want to do that. Um, because that, that leads into the um, the pop-in that I was talking about um, earlier, where basically the labels aren't there, and then suddenly they are. And we don't want that. Um, instead, we want them to individually fade in when they're actually being used. Um, now, I could, I suppose, have a shared parent canvas. Um, or probably what I, what I should do is just have this be a virtual function. Honestly, um, and then we can just have uh, the various types of combat um, override this and figure out what they want to do with it. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we're going to say show combat labels. So virtual. So for this first combat level in particular, uh, I'm going to just fade the two the um, the two labels in at the same time, um, and they'll just be in the background. So let's see, show combo labels, resolve combo labels, um, coroutine doing something apparently. Uh, let's go ahead and go down to my coroutines, resolve combo label coroutines. Oh dear, this is going to be somewhat complex because it's got to do all the scaling and stuff. So let's go ahead and get rid of you. Move this all the way down here because I have a very rigid hierarchy of how I organize my code. Let's see. So instead, I think I'm going to do this, do that. Should fix those errors. Mm -hmm. Add combo labels. Add combo labels. All right. So let's see. Real time. Let's go ahead and do this. Mm -hmm. All right. Player victory, win, win wrecked. Okay. Oh. Oh, I guess that's true. TQ Combat wouldn't have any reference to that stuff. Joy, joy, joy. Um, God, yeah, this is going to... Uh, this is going to get messy super quickly. All right. Um, let's go ahead and try to clean some of this up all the way up here. So we're going to need, instead of combo label area, although I will take that because this is worthless in combat view, let's go ahead and go all the way back up here. There we go. Cutscenes, 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 combo labels. Well, good, we can put this all here. Um, combo text should go after everything else. Uh, let's see, hint area. I'm just going to grab everything that needs to be grabbed here. Let's grab this. Paste that in. And let's 
let's see, movement curve, declaration label, info label, compo label. Uh -huh. Grab this. And let's see. I think I'm going to need this as well. Paste that in. Yes, there we go. Oh, and I guess I'm going to need these, the perfect combo message and all that. Uh, so let's go ahead and take that. Grab that, and boom. Cool. Uh, so that should solve most of those problems. At least I think it does. Let's go ahead and save this. Uh, do I need anything else? Nope, 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 nope. Okay. So let's go up here and go ahead and say, using... Uh, Pro, TM Pro. So that'll give us access to the text mesh stuff. Let's go ahead and go down here. What is left? Crud. Uh, cached enemy info. That's uh, not great. Um, do I set you? I think I do. All right. I I can get away with that then. Um, because I'm pretty sure that this is called from TQ Combat. Yep. Cool. 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 So I can just go ahead and do that then. Let's go ahead and go down here. So this is going to be current enemy info. It's been a while since I've dug into the bowels of my combat system. It is not pretty. Um, so we're just going to change this to show combo labels. Player combo background. It's all fine. And resolve combo labels. So that actually worked out pretty well. That worked out better than I thought. Mostly because, like I said, a lot of the UI functionality was kind of just pass-through. Um, I wasn't really doing too much that the um, TQ Combat class itself didn't know about already. Um, all right, let's go ahead. All right, so if we go ahead and zoom up all the way here. Um, I'll have this compile real quick. And then, actually, in pretty short order, we should be able to just test this um, to see how things look. And that means that our uh, overlap check should actually work. Aha! All right, uh, let's see. So we're going to go to Battle Canvas. Um, and actually, you know, before we do that, let's go ahead and go to over here to Combat. Um, ooh, this might not be good. This is going to go poorly. Um, I have a custom editor for this. Yep. All right. Uh, so that means I'm going to I'm going to ignore that. I'm not going to look at combat view for now. Um, instead, I'm just going to assume, which you know always means that things are going to turn out well, um, that everything's fine. I'm just going to apply this. All right. So we can delete that. Get rid of our UI object. Sweet. And now we can assign all of our wonderful, wonderful stuff. To our combat, um, which also has a custom editor, so uh, that's gonna make things even more fun. Cool. Uh, so let's see, combo area. Let's go ahead and put that in there. Um, actually, you know what? Um, let's go ahead and change that. So instead of combo, what happened? There we are. So instead of game object, I'm gonna make this a um, canvas group. Go ahead and go down here. So we're going to say canvas group dot set alpha, oh, no, no, no. Uh, just dot alpha, yeah, all right. Alpha is equal to zero F, yep. So we'll say dot alpha is equal to one F. Um, so we'll actually want to, uh, how to phrase this, um, we'll probably want to make this an ease in, ease out thing, um, or rather happen over time instead of just a hard set. Uh, for now, I'm not going to worry about it unless there is already a nice area dot is there not a set alpha really I can't just do like a nope of course not why would why would you want that all right that means I'm gonna have to add that functionality um I wonder if I can do it in a I probably could do it in a cover team manager mm, yeah, it's fine for now um, let's go ahead and let that compile real quick I'm gonna have to reassign that first let's go over here to normal let's add component once it compiles, of course. <laughs> Any day now. 
Shazam. There we go. Uh, so we're going to call this a canvas canvas group. Canvas groups just let you scale in alpha um, super easily. So if I wanted to, you can see that I can fade between 0 and 1 um, for the alpha. Um, let's see. It's not going to do any of these things. Um, and we should be good with that. Cool. Let's go ahead and go back to combat. Debug. Yeah, I know type mismatch. There you go. Uh, player combo background. Enemy combo background. Player combo label. Enemy combo label. All that stuff is good. Cool. Say normal. So even though we can't see it in our editor, um, we can add that once we know that it works. Let's go ahead and save this. Um, to start, I guess I'm actually going to go ahead and also set a uh, canvas group here to be zero alpha. I think that that honestly might that might be all we had to do. Um, I guess before I forget hiccups. Uh, let's go ahead and go to our battle canvas real quick. Combo area player. I'm going to change these two um, to use just our regular solid instead of solid small. Um, and then we'll get rid of solid small because it's not really that useful. Since I have to scale anything anyway. Or scale everything anyway. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and go to sewers and then we'll test this. I have high hopes, which means that it's going to fail miserably be an embarrassment. But really, once I've accepted that, what's the worst that can happen? So hit. All right. So let's keep an eye out for null references. Nice, nothing so far. Ooh, well. It does seem like they're working. That's pretty good. Cool. So that does seem to work. Um, with the extra bonus now of uh, the hero and the attacks always drawing in front of it. Um, we do probably want it to not be nothing initially. So you'll notice here when I first start, it's, it's nothing. It's basically a small square. Um, but because of that, it's possible for the overlap to occur a lot easier. Um, so we probably should make it times zero or something, um, just so that it doesn't really um, risk the attack overlapping with it and then being being sort of stacked um, after you do actually get a combo. So <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and just see what it looks like a couple of more times. So now we do have the other problem of we need to make sure that our player does not obscure the attacks themselves, which means that we need to make sure that they draw in front of it. Um, but I don't actually think that would be too difficult. I think we can do that simply by, let's go up to characters, hero, um, hero, model, so all of, does that work with me here? There we go. Um, so all of these should have a fudge order, I believe. Uh, let's see, extra settings. Yeah, order of zero. I think they're all going to, so they're probably going to be zero. That's good. Um, so what I probably could do, if I go to battle canvas, if I make my, let's see, att attack area, if I move this up. Oh, no, it's already rendering in front. Um, hmm. So that probably means that I need to, Wow, I have some leftover patterns. That's interesting. They don't get recycled? Huh. Okay. Um, let's... Jeez. Oh, okay. I think I have an idea. Um, huh. That's what I thought I did. Uh, let's go ahead and say attack area. We're going to add another canvas group to it. Um... No, not a canvas group. Um, there is a way to do this. Is it a... Oh, surely I don't have to do a... Oh, good, I do. I have to do an entirely separate canvas. Because why not? Um, 
So I can basically force this to be the top, and then this one will be, I guess, above that. So now if we do this, um, the attack should render in front of the hero. Oh, except they totally don't. Well, look at that. Don't I look a fool? Interesting. Uh, let's see. Shouldn't have to do negative values, right? Two. Nope. Interesting. Um, hmm. Let's see. What can I do about that? I suppose I could just do it the reverse way and have the heroes thing be below everything else. Um, so I think I would want this to be order of negative one. Yeah. So that I mean that'll that'll also work. Eh. Um, I guess that's that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and go back to super combat so I can do that real quick. I'm also going to go ahead and unrotate that. Uh, let's go to characters, hero. Let's go ahead and grab all of these. Let's go to our settings, and order will be negative one. Um, our troll doesn't really need to do that as well, but I guess I'll, I'll do it anyway, just for consistency's sake. Um, order of negative one. Okay. So now both of those characters should appear below um, the other canvases. Let's go ahead and go back to the sewers, and then we'll try this. <laughs> hmm. All right. Let's go ahead and hit it. And let's see. So we're going to do battle, crush, kick. Are you serious? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Sometimes it seemed to work. It looked like it was working for this one. That... What? So you can see here, um, the H is rendering in the correct order, but the E, R, and everything else is not. Is that also happening here? It is. What the heck? Oh, uh, you know what I bet happened? 10 to 1 says that Text Mesh Pro didn't actually change um, anything, except for the top one. So I bet hero is negative one. And I bet E and all of them are not. Yep, okay. Thanks, Text Mesh Pro. Um yeah, that means I have to individually change them. Yay! I mean it's not a lot of work, it's just it's a waste. I don't know why why it doesn't work. Um when you're trying to edit all of them. Let's see characters, hero, troll, da da da. It's the wrong thing. Let's see, negative one, negative one. Oh wow, that is not negative one. Negative one, negative one, negative one. All right. Come on, there we go. That's super weird. The R was fine, but whatever. <laughs> all right, so now all of that should actually be correct. Save that. Let's try that again. So all in all, combat is shaping up to be pretty decent. Um, I do think it's a bit of a leviathan of a code base. Um, I feel like I probably should, I probably should try to streamline it a little bit. Um, my main problem with it is that there's so many coroutines running in it. Um, to do all of these nice transitions. I honestly don't know how to do them otherwise. It just It just becomes a nightmare to try and manage them all. Um, so yeah, and we're also still getting that sort of teleporting behavior um, that you can see there. I was hoping that waiting for the end of the frame would fix that, but it doesn't really seem to be. 
also, goodness gracious, they are now rendering <sighs> behind the combo labels. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Oh, come on. You can't, you cannot be serious. Hold on. So the O or the R is rendering below it, but is the, did the T set itself back to one? Or to zero. You've got to be kidding me. Um, oh. What the heck? They all got set back to zero. That happened to the hero too? Ah, what the heck? It did. Okay. Um, that's weird. That is strange. Um, cool. Yeah, I can see that now. Um... Cool, cool. Um, well, that's what I wanted, you know, personally. I was hoping that would be the case. Not really, I'm incredibly angry. Um, but I suppose that I can address a couple of things while I'm in here anyway. So let's go ahead and do, you know, let's go ahead and change those again. I'm guessing what happened actually is um, maybe for some reason this order field is not actually serializing properly. So when I change this, it's not... It's not actually doing anything. You can see the um, the scene hasn't been marked dirty, which means that uh, when I change scenes, that those changes will get blown away. Um, I can fix that by making all of these changes, and then um, once I'm done, just changing something in the scene that should force a reserialization ah, reserialization of everything, um, which is good because I actually need to do that anyway. Uh, so let's go up here to Battle Canvas Combo Area. Um, we're going to just make this a straight up canvas that overrides sorting, um, and, and makes it, uh, order and layer of negative two. Um, okay. So now I have a dirty scene. If I save, should be good. Let's go ahead and just, just check to be sure. Negative one, negative one, negative one. Good. Cool. Let's go ahead and, uh, test this out again. You gotta love unity sorting order stuff. Although I guess, to be fair, it's it's more convenient than not having it. Um, being able to fudge UI order is actually pretty convenient sometimes. All right. <laughs> We're getting our camera positioning. Get our battle animations going. And we're going to start a fight. I am behind it. The troll is in front of his label. That's good. Cool. Yeah, that actually looks... Oh, crud. Am I... Is my hero rendering behind the friggin' light? I just noticed that. Uh, don't tell me it is. Don't. Don't do it. No! <laughs> ah, nobody likes you. Okay. Great. To be fair... I think those those uh, glass lights are not even using physically based rendering. I'm pretty sure they're using like the diffuse stuff. Ah, great. All right, let's go ahead and grab that. This is just a wow. Mm, that was weird. Um. Wah, okay then. I guess we're doing baked. That's probably going to be real time, actually. Um, let's see. I know it is a standard shader. Jeez. Um, There's not a good way to do this, is there? I might... Okay, yeah. I think what I need to do is... Um, basically have the so instead of having the combo area be negative two it's going to be negative one um, and the characters are all going to be set back to zero uh, and then i'm just going to have this battle canvas have an order and layer of one now you might be wondering why i didn't do that before and that's because i just didn't think about it i wish i wish there was a more clever reason than that but i just honestly didn't think about it uh let's see let's go ahead and do 
this, so zero. Uh, same thing. Oh crap, I should have changed the uh, canvas after this, because now i got to do something else. Um, zero, zero, and zero. Cool. Um, and let's see, battle canvas, battle canvas. Uh, let's what the heck happened there. Uh, border and layer. Nah, we'll, we'll keep it at one. Hit save. World space, event camera, which really isn't a thing, but if I remember correctly, I actually do want to assign one, even if I'm not going to do anything with it. Um, additional trader channels. Don't think I need those, but whatever. We'll let them go. Cool. So let's give that a shot. So now our hero and troll should render on top of the glass, um, but and on top of our combo labels, but behind our attack labels. Um, and at that point, I think we're basically where we want to be for attacks fading in and out. Uh, so let's go ahead and say hit. And that combat transition. <laughs> it takes a little bit longer than I was expecting. Um, here we get our fade in. Let's go ahead and do our combos. Crush, attack. See if everything fades as expected. Good. Good, 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 good. So all that looks correct now. Um, I like that. I do like that. Um, I guess, does our combo label seem like it's in a good spot? Yeah. I don't think it really needs to move at all. Um... Go ahead and let the troll win one. Because we, we could move the combo label up, maybe. Because um, it's, it's a little low to the ground, but that's kind of a minor gripe. Okay, flattened. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Um, so next thing we're going to do is fade in our alpha area. Or our alpha area, our combat area. Um, so, oh boy, got some magic stuff going on. God, I really need to break this out into two classes. Uh, let's see, it's eight o'clock, so I usually have about an hour and a half to two hours left on the stream after this point. Oh boy. <laughs> yep, okay, we're going to do that. Um, so for the most part, what I've been doing is kind of a bad practice when you're scripting, and not and by kind of, I mean a horrendously terrible practice that you should never do. Um, I was just using the troll combat scene as a base, but really I should just have a TQ combat base script and then a troll combat, because um, I'm also going to need, like, you know, spider combat, flaming moth combat, um, all that stuff. Um... And they're not going to all use the same thing that the that the troll uh, stuff ends up using. So I think this is a good point, as well as good a point as any, as any um, to um, to basically separate some functionality out into a specific subclass. So let's go ahead and grab this TQ combat. And oh boy. So we have Super Troll, Attack Pattern, Super Troll Animator. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create C Sharp script. We're going to call this Troll Combat. And we'll say Sewer Troll. Sewer Troll Combat. All right, let's go ahead and open that up. Open it all. <laughs> Oh, and in Rec Transform Extensions, I'm also going to get rid of my debug line stuff, because I don't need it anymore. Get rid of you. Close you. Get rid of combat. All right, so it's going to be under the text quest namespace. It's going to derive from TQ Combat. And... <laughs> yeah, this is going to be interesting. Um... I guess, geez. Let's see. Some of this stuff. Um, 
how do I want to structure this? What am I using you? And is this in a overridable? Oh uh, yes, and no. So resolve combo label coroutine is a private coroutine, but that doesn't mean we can't make it protected or um, overridable. Um, I'm basically deciding right now what should be in the base DQ combat class. Um, and the only things that I think absolutely need to be here would be um, the labels themselves and the combo messages. At least that's all I can really think of that need to be there. Um, pretty much everything else is kind of specific to the to the, the fight itself. Um, although I'm guessing I'm probably going to universally use scaling and color, so these three fields can stay there, um, which probably means that this field, these two fields can stay here, um, and at that point it just means this is the only thing that needs to move. Um, so, fine. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say override... Um, Hide combo labels, and override combo label, show combo labels. Um, by default, this is going to be empty, I think. It's not really going to do anything. Um, so let's go ahead and do using system. Oh, wow, that was terrible typing. Using system.collections. We're going to need a coroutine. So we're going to go ahead and say private enumerator. Um, and say fade combo labels. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go ahead and just say yield return null for now. It's not going to actually do anything. Um, so we're going to move this over to here. Then we're going to go back here and see what broke. Really? <laughs> All right, that's fair. Um, also, I'm... God, where am I even using this? There's no real point to this anymore. I think I can just straight up say um, player combo label dot text is equal to that. And then enemy combo label text is equal to that. Okay. No point to have these refresh functions because all they do is just call that. Um, same thing. Make sure nothing else is using it. Good. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these then. Do, 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 do. And then say player combo label text is equal nothing and enemy combo label dot text is equal to nothing as well get rid of you all right um do i want to do anything else <sighs> maybe yeah. all right um let's go ahead and move these over. There's our combo. And, ah, I moved it. Get rid of this. Um, so I guess these are just going to, well, should I make them abstract then? Um, I mean, TQ Combat isn't abstract, isn't an abstract class, so it would not like that. Um, for now, I'm not going to do that. I might do that in the future. Um, but Wow, where did I paste that? What the heck? Okay, weird. Thought I pasted this over here, but I apparently did not. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of you. And so we're gonna do basically that. Um, actually, no, let's go ahead and move that so it's after the base.show labels. Um, and then we're gonna make it a coroutine. So. 
Let's go ahead and get rid of this space. So show combo labels itself is actually going to have um, some functionality built into it. So I guess that means I should just make these virtual. Um, hello, Josh. Welcome back. How are you doing today? All right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and let's see combo label area. Since they're going to be the same, then yes, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and say float start, float end, and we'll say end alpha, or alphs, start alpha, end alpha, come on, one of these days I'll learn how to type, um, duration, uh, I guess I could make that a public thing, um, so public float combo label, Fade duration is equal to 1f, I think, will be good. Um, might might go a little bit faster, but 1f is always a good baseline. Um. <laughs> Man, you are just working your way through that series. Um. That's, well, that's, let's see, that's, how many are there? There's nine or eight? I forget, because the last one was a two-parter. I remember that. Um. Thing about trying Total War, Warhammer 2. I've heard good things. I'm not a good judge, admittedly, because RTSs and, and 4Xs and basically all of those types of games, strategy games in general, are not really my thing. But I have friends who play them and they recommend them. Um, so if it's your type of game, I've heard it's good. Uh, all right. So we're going to go ahead and say um, combo label area dot alpha is equal to start alpha. And then we're going to do a while loop. Um, so let's say float t is equal to 0f, while t is less than 1f. Get rid of you. All right, we're going to say t plus equals time dot delta time. And then we're going to go ahead and say uh, combo area dot alpha is equal to math f dot lerp between start alpha and end alpha based on t that's going to give us a linear lerp um i guess to be fair what i can do here is add a um, public information curve um so this will be our fade in oh, no hold on um name it a little bit better than that so combo label fade in curve Oof, really long name i don't like having really long names is equal to new animation curve yada 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 eight movies yes yeah, that's right seven books and the last one was a two-parter i guess technically nine movies because it's getting its own cinematic universe like everything else in the world nowadays um so we're gonna say new keyframe zero up zero up so this is just a nice way to do so, uh, basic easing. Um, you can use animation, uh, animation curves to drive lerp values. Um, so we're going to say new keyframe, 1f, 1f. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and copy this. Paste it in. We're going to say fade out curve. Um, actually, you know what? We'll also just call this combo fade out curve. So combo label fade out curve. Um, same thing here. Just to shorten. Oops, actually, before we do that. Uh, mm, okay, so I haven't done that yet. That's good. So this is going to be um, plus equal time dot delta time divided by uh, combo fade duration. All right, uh, and we're going to have animation curve, um, using curve, and this is going to be using curve dot, ah, dot evaluate for t cool so that all works um and now we're going to go ahead and say start coroutine nope, not start combat start coroutine fade combo labels and we'll pass in zero f, oh no, no i'm sorry um one f zero f and then 
combo fade out curve. Go ahead and set that. These are going to be zero, one, fade in curve. Cool. And then finally, we'll end up here saying combo label area dot alpha is equal to end alpha. All right. So this should handle fading all of that in. Um, do I need to do anything else here? Not really. Okay. Um, I suppose I should probably go ahead and make our uh, our player combo label text not be empty. It should actually be the string dot format. Oops, except I can't spell string. String dot format. Um, was it combo text? And then we'll just say zero. Um, same thing here. Oh, you know what? Next, you uh, even better. I can just say this, can't I? Ha <laughs> ha! Save some processing. Um, and just for fun, I yeah, we'll leave that alone for now. I was going to rename that, but then I forgot. That's going to break my inspectors, so I'll we'll let that go. All right. So with that, um, to get this to, to work properly, I'm going to actually have to do a full conversion from TQ over to uh, ah, Sewer Troll Combat. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, so much stuff that's going to have to happen for that. All right, um, let's go ahead and get that started, I guess. All right, uh, let's see, we'll do basic stuff first. So sewer combat, uh, background of nothing. Fortunately, they are opening everything up at the same time. Well, that's great. Um, I don't think I have anything, yeah. Materials, we'll probably go ahead and do that. Yeah. Go ahead and drag you in. Um, do I need to grab more materials? No, I think we're do I have extra materials that need to be added? Nope. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of those. All right. So sewers for our base level ID. Sewer troll for our base spawn ID. We're good there. Good there. Let's go ahead and collapse these as best we can. Mm -hmm. troll. All right. Now comes all the fun stuff. This is why you don't remove scripts before you add new scripts, because you can use all of the existing fields. It's very convenient. Your attack point. Any attack point. All right. All right. And once we're done with this, we'll actually um, probably move over to using our. Uh oh, I just lagged for a bit there. Um, to writing our new inspectors for this. And I think I'm going to start using something that I've recently been doing for custom inspectors, which is basically, um, oh, crap, that didn't work. Um, basically, instead of having all of the fields hard-coded, I'm going to do that, but then I'm also going to allow all of the fields that I haven't already specified to draw when they're created. Um, and that's that's just a nice way for me to not have to constantly update my um, my inspectors. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get rid of you. Okay, so we should be good here. Uh, is there anything else that needs to happen? Nope. Cool. Let's go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and change our editor for this. Okay, let's go to combat editor. Uh, let's see. So the combat editor is a custom editor for both TQ combat and all of its um, derived classes, um, which means that we're going to have to override this if we want to see some new stuff. Um, playing Osu. I have not played Osu. 
I feel like I've heard it. Or heard of it. But I don't know what it is. Is it good? Huh. I've definitely not played this. <laughs> oh, rhythm games. You aim with your right hand and tap with your left? Jeez. <laughs> I'm going to mute it so that I don't get flagged by Twitch, but... Yeah, that... Wow. Um, that actually reminds me, I did used to play a game called Citus, I think. Um... That was very similar. Um... Let's see if I can find it and hope that I don't accidentally see anything bad. Um, yeah, it was also a rhythm game that was largely tap-based, but there were some songs in that thing that were just insanity. Like, you're just tapping. I mean, I don't, I don't even know what speed you would be tapping at. It, that, it was insane. Um, but, yeah, those types of games are pretty good. Pretty good time sinks. Um, alright, uh, so... Let's see, how to... How to do this. Um... So, I guess first things first, I am going to go ahead and change combo text here to say combo message. Um, let's go ahead and rename this combo message uh, because I want to rename that to combo message. Because that just sounds better than combo text. Um, right, so... And this is going to require a little bit more setup initially, but it should work in the long run. So I'm going to see some fun stuff here. I have a private string array of ignore fields is equal to new string zero. All right, so private string array ignore fields. A getter get at the end we're going to return ignore fields um, but if ignore fields uh, dot length is equal to zero we're going to actually initialize that and do a bunch of stuff so let's see here um, we're also going to need to do a few things aren't we let's go ahead and pull this over save come up here combat. Um, actually, you know, before we do that, I'll show you how this will work without me doing anything extra. So I'm not going to add my combo uh, fields yet. Um, I'm going to show you what the ignore field stuff does, and then I'll show you what the combo field, or then I'll actually manually add in the combo fields. Um, but these ignore fields will basically let me automatically draw fields without doubling up. Um, so let's go ahead and go to... Um, so we're just going to go ahead and say ignore fields is equal to new string. There's going to be a lot. Um, so we're going to need 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21. Okay. And we have to manually specify all this. Actually, we're going to need 22, because I always forget the script field. Um, so it's going to be m underscore script. Okay, and then we're just going to kind of add them as we go. So we're going to say base level. Ah, crud. Ah, crud. Hold on. Time out. Time out. This is actually... Um, more challenging than I was hoping because level manager editor is involved in this, which means that I actually have to add it to this class as well. Um, fortunately, that's not a huge problem. Um, let's go ahead and go over here. 
and this will work better for my editors in the long run um, because again it means that I I will automatically have fields show up without me having to add them um, which just makes things a little bit easier so uh, let's go ahead and basically pull over what I was about to do here which I have apparently lost it there we go um, so we're going to change this this entire thing pull this down here and we're going to make this instead of private protected And this is also going to be a virtual thing. There we go. Uh, all right. So this is going to be ID. Uh, this one is going to be a lot smaller than 22. Mm -hmm. Items. Mm -hmm. Ambience. Sounds. Alright. Materials. Oops, forgot my comma. This is going to complicate things though. <laughs> uh, let's see. Extra materials. Let's go ahead and grab that. So basically, I have to use these string fields because of. Um, uh, how, how to phrase it? Um, these these field names will tell my my function that's going to draw all of my fields um, not to draw these fields. Let's see, uh, extra materials, menu, cameras. Okay, two more. Look at this one. Environment info, environment descriptions, and finally, whatever the last one is, zones, of course. Owns. Cool. Um, so let's see, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. All right. Um, so with this, um, let's see, draw base info. Oh my goodness, that's going to be a lot. Alright, uh, draw items. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this here. Nope, not private. Protected, void, draw, extra fields. Alright, um, so we're going to go ahead and do draw extra fields here. And for this, we're just going to say, um, it's kind of weird. We're going to say serialized property. Uh, we'll just call it prop is equal to serialized object dot get iterator, I believe. And is that really all we needed? Okay. And then we're going to say while prop dot has visible children, I believe. No, no, no. It's uh, next. Yeah. Next visible. And we do want to enter children. And we're going to go ahead and say um, if prop dot, I think name, yeah, name is what I want. Um, dang it. Of course I did that wrong. Um, I made it an array when instead I should have made it a list. Um, I always, I always forget to make it a list. Um, so let's let's see here. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, like no getting around that. List more fields is equal to new list string. Da, 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 da. All right, so this is going to be dot count. This will be a list string. All right, um, so this is going to be new list string. That should add everything that we need. Mm -hmm. And now we can just go down here and say if if ignore fields dot contains prop name. 
continue. Also make sure that that's the big eye, otherwise we might accidentally initialize on uh, no names whatsoever. Um, and then otherwise we're just going to do a basic thing, which is going to be um, editor GUI layout dot property field prop. Oh, and I guess true. Um, that should be good. So, um, that should more or less be all I need to do. Um, let's go ahead and go back here to combat editor real quick. And I am going to say, uh, after on inspector GUI at the very end here, we're just going to go ahead and say draw extra fields. Cool. So now, uh, if we look at our combat, we should see a bunch of stuff pop up after this cutscenes um, block. Now it's not going to have any sort of special formatting. It's just going to be whatever the default property drawers are. Ah, property drawers are for all of those fields. Um, yep, there we go. Um, so you can see that we got a lot of a lot of stuff here. Um, so oh right, I almost forgot um, one of the other important things. Actually, I didn't almost forget. I did forget. Uh, we're going to say uh, if prop dot depth yeah is greater than zero continue Oops, continue there we go um so you're seeing a lot of size things here that's because those are properties that are like child properties of things for things like arrays but we don't really need those um so i tell it to skip those so we should see those go away yep there you go um, and you can see that these are all basically the same thing as, uh, let's see, what is it? Oh, I guess, uh, wait, what? Really? thought uh, level info, audio, materials. Huh. I guess zones are hidden. Oh, right, I, they would be because I'm not doing the base, the base thing here. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in here that's kind of doubled up right now. And that's because I'm not actually using these ignore fields properly. Um, um, you can see that some things are being ignored properly, but other things are not, which is weird. Why would that be the case? Go ahead, go back up here. Um, zones, zones, zones. Hmm. Is, is, hmm. Show zones and level zones. Are those not actually serialized? That's interesting. Um, let's take a look at this real quick. Level manager. Go to definition. Zones, 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 zones. Interesting. Huh. Where is it? How is I using this? Oh, it's because that's a gizmos thing. That still should be shown somewhat. Um, hold on. Before we do anything, I want to kind of check this out. Um, so I'm going to save this real quick. I'm going to go to the sewers level. Over here to sewers, zones. Yeah, right there. Oh, it's because I had a custom drawer. Duh. Um, yeah, so we want to actually go over here to level manager. Where are you? Ah, where the heck is it? Um, oh, there it is. Ah, I hate it when it does that. Uh, all right, so we want to add after zones. What was it? Show zones. Zones visible. Uh, hold on. Let's go ahead and close some of this. Uh, benchmark manager. Castle sewers manager. We can get rid of you. All right. We're going to go ahead and go back up here. Take a look at level manager again. Go to definition. Scroll back down. So we have show zones, and it looked like level zones were also being used. Huh. I wonder why I did it that way. Interesting. Um, so yeah, we're going to want to do show zones and finally level zones. So adding those two, you should see mm -hmm. Oh, I guess it's actually not going to reflect this, is it? Because they're all kind of using their own special little thing. So let's go ahead and go back to sewer combat. We are. 
So at this point, I think we are showing everything. Yep, there we go. So all of the fields here that you see um, are just the fields that we want for troll combat. Well, they're for TQ combat and troll combat. The last ones would be down here. Um, but that's without me telling the custom editor to draw those fields, basically. Well, I am telling them to draw them, but I don't know what those fields are. I just tell it to draw all fields that are not um, below the top level depth and um, are not part of a specific set of ignore fields. Um, so if you're doing any sort of custom editor scripting, um, I know that setup is a little odd, um, doing it like this, having this list of strings that you keep track of, um, but it does in the long run, especially if you're working with other people um, who are going to be working and possibly adding to a script that has a custom inspector, um, this little, this little um, chunk of code really saves time because they don't have to go in and figure out how to change your level editor or your um, your custom editor script. They can just make their fields in the base script, then it's automatically updated. Um, so if you're doing any sort of group work, um, I definitely take a or I I definitely recommend taking a look at this and um, and adding that to your custom editors because it it saves saves me a big chunk of time um, at work. And it's just a convenient thing for you because if you want to add and remove fields just to test things, you don't have to go into debug mode and do a bunch of stuff like that. Um, and all that for, what, seven, nine lines of code? Seven if you don't count spaces. Well, no. Whatever, yeah. Um, in any case. So uh, to make this functional on a certain level, we're going to actually have to go up to... Where are you? Combat editor. There we are. Um, we're gonna have to go up to combat editor, and we're gonna need to override um, ignore fields. So we're gonna have to say um, return ignore fields, and then we're gonna say if ignore fields dot count is equal to zero. We'll say ignore fields dot is equal to base dot ignore fields. That'll give us our base group of ignore fields. Um, and then from there, we're just going to add a bunch. Um, so we're going to say, um, typically the convenient thing to do, I suppose, is just to do another list string um, new fields equal to new string. And then at the end here, we're just going to say ignore fields dot add range. Um, fields. All right. Uh, so I don't, I guess I could just make a new list here. It's fine. Um, so let's go ahead and clear this. So we have a bunch of stuff that needs to be ignored here as well. Um, so we're going to say base level, spawn ID, mm -hmm. player, You know what? Um, let's just do this a bunch of times. That'll be faster. Okay. Let's equip. Head equip. Oh my goodness! There's a lot. Oh right, this one was the one with twenty, so that that kind of makes sense. Um, normally, I don't do super wide things like this, but it's kind of just how this functions. Because it's either going to be incredibly tall or incre incredibly wide. Um, just kind of got to pick my evils here. Enemies. This. All the cutscenes. Mm -hmm. Although it definitely does make it kind of awkward. Um, I guess I could probably break this down a little bit more. Let's go ahead and say this. I'll just make this a little bit more manageable. There we go. Um, so the last one was victory cutscene. Player defeated cutscene. Let's go ahead and do this. Enemy defeated cutscene. Cutscene. 
and let's go ahead a couple more times and paste because I have a bunch of them here. Uh, let's see. So that was item cutscene, flea cutscene. A little tedious, admittedly, to do this, but again, that's largely because I didn't set it up the first time. Um, if you do this in advance of having a bunch of stuff in your editor, it makes it a lot faster. Um, and again, it's not nearly as tedious. Special cutscenes. Let's go ahead and copy this. Now, the real holy grail here would be trying to find a way to automatically detect certain things. Um, which I'm not entirely... I feel like there is probably a way to do that, but it would not be easy. I guess you would have to do like a system.reflection and grab all of the all of the properties that are exposed. Um, in any case, uh, let's see here. So that should now update, and those should be cut down to... Yep, there we go. Oh, looks like I missed one. Combat cutscene. Did I double up? Did I double up? Or did I just miss combat win? Uh, yeah, I just missed it. Okay. Fair enough. Oops. There we go. Um, and of course, another downside of it is that you do need to um, deselect the object so that the editor can rebuild. Um, if you don't do that, it won't, it won't update. It won't break anything, it just won't look right. Um, so now all of the fields that we're seeing are fields that I just have not specifically told um, the sewer troll combat inspector to draw. Um, they're just the leftover fields that I'm telling it, that I'm not not telling it to draw. If that makes sense, or that I'm not telling it not to draw. Ah, whatever. Um, and all of these are perfectly functional, so if I wanted to, I could actually assign these. Um, so if we go over here to Battle Canvas, See player combo background is that right? Um, so that would be like there. I mean, it'll it'll all work. Um, it just won't have any sort of fancy formatting like these text areas um, that I use. Um, but for now, we can assign these, and I don't have to worry about anything extra on the on the um, uh, editor front. So let's go ahead and assign these. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Player combo label. And we combo label. Uh, canvas group is going to go there. Cool. So let's go ahead and test this. I'm kind of curious to see what our combo labels fading in looks like. All right. Because I think that uh, having combo labels fade in already at time zero will actually make them feel a little bit better instead of just um, instead of just popping in and then not having anything in them and then popping in again when you actually do get a combo. Um, also, I think having time zero on the background will help players um, know that they're supposed to be doing something. So, and of course, I wasn't actually looking at it when it happened, so I don't know if that looks right. Um, so that should be good. So now we get that, and now we should get it fading out instead of just popping away. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, I do like it. Um, I do kind of feel like I need to make the the combo labels feel like they're being affected by lighting a little bit more. They do feel like UI elements right now instead of being part of the world. Um, and I know that TextMesh Pro can do um, world-based lighting or scene-based lighting. Scene-based lighting. Um, but I'm not entirely sure about things like images. Um, I feel like those might be a little bit more difficult. Um, but in any case, that at least does work, which is pretty exciting to me. Um, let's go ahead and go back here. For now, I'm not really going to worry about... Um, all of these custom inspectors. Because I probably should at some point, but eh. Oops, hold on. All right. So, what to do now? Let's go ahead and go back to sewer. Actually, you know what? I don't know why I stopped playing. Um, 
So we have our combo labels fading in and out. They have been moved over to world space. Um, they are being included in the sorting order now. Um, so the player renders in front of the combo la labels, but behind the attack labels. Um, what else is there? Uh, oh, um, the combo labels are now being factored into the screen space calculations when positioning attacks. Um, the, the only really big thing that I don't like right now is if you look at my attacks, you'll occasionally see them like sp stutter and sort of teleport around. Um, I don't know how to prevent that. Typically something like that would be, would be prevented by having them be located in late update. Um, but I can't really do that in a coroutine. I'm kind of, kind of stuck with what I got. Um, and I mean, the, the stuff that I'm doing with that, if I go over here to attack pattern, um, you can see that I wait for the end of the frame. I was really hoping that that would basically be the same as doing like a late update, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, cause the, the problem is that stuttering occurs when I try to position it while fading it in. Um, when in reality it, it really should be positioned and then fade in, um, and it's kind of weird because I don't actually, I don't actually tell it to start fading in. Well, actually, right. That doesn't. Dang it! I can't really do that because I have to, I have to tell it to start attack. Um. Otherwise, it won't actually set its attack label. Excuse me. Um, and if it doesn't set its attack label, um, so the visible message that you see, um, I can't, I can't actually calculate its bounds because, well, the label won't have stretched the um, rectangle to be what it needs to be. So that's not great. Um, this is also kind of annoying because I actually did add a yield return null here, um, but apparently that's not good enough. Um, I'm actually kind of curious if I did this, would it work? So if I have two yield nulls, will that fix it? I really hope not. I hate I hate having to just arbitrarily yield for a frame. Um, that that always feels sloppy to me. Um, unfortunately, that is actually a much more common thing than I would prefer uh, when you're when working with Unity's UI system, because for some reason, like half of UI or half of Unity's UI needs a frame buffer. So text objects, um, images require a frame buffer for their width and height to be calculated. Um, you can't you can't even just grab them um, from from code and get an accurate number. You have to wait that one frame for them to or for them to update accurately. It, it, it's mind boggling why they would do that. Um, but because of that, it, it's incredibly frustrating to actually try and access anything. In any case, why they would do that did not mean to meet, unmute that. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and let's battle again. Let's see if we get any teleporters. <laughs> we did. Yeah, you can just you can just see them whip around like that, and I don't I don't understand how that happens. Um, because it really shouldn't be possible. Um, they shouldn't. They're not being positioned over several ah, over several frames. They're just they're just happening. Um, and they should all be positioned within the same frame. <sighs> it's odd. I wonder if I ah, excuse me. Um, where are you? Here we are. I wonder if I did debug dot break if it would actually do it. Um, let's find out. Uh, let's see. While overlaps. So this is going to probably suck. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is it's going to pause the editor every time it has to recalculate its position. So I'm curious if we'll actually get that, that positioning per frame. Um, because debug.break waits till the end of the frame. So if multiple things happen at once, it won't actually matter until the end of the frame. Um, so if we see it flicker still, then that means that it is calculating 
in less than a frame, but it's being rendered over that frame, or over several frames or something, I don't know, or, or it's just leaving that information for the frame to pick up, which seems odd, um, but I don't necessarily discount it as a possibility, I suppose. Uh, ugh. Okay, so let's see what happens. Really? You're going to... Okay. 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 Interesting. And see that there it, uh, it overlaps slightly. Not entirely, but slightly. <sighs> okay. Okay. There it also overlaps slightly. Hmm. Why does that happen? Although I did forget to add a buffer for that, so that I could try to prevent that. Um, oh man, I just love the fading in and out. <laughs> I know that's such a small thing to do, but man, it makes it feel so much better. Um, okay, so this is going to be... Interesting. So I'm not seeing the flicker anymore, but I honestly don't know if that actually means that it's not happening, or if it's just bad luck. Could be that, honestly. Um, could be any of that. Let's go ahead and do one. Okay. So here's, here's actually the problem. This fade-in? shouldn't shouldn't be happening now that I think about it let's go ahead and select this come on in, in. <laughs> fine be that way um, so we're looking at attack I guess interesting even more interesting so you can see that this this is the next attack point yep Ah, great. Um, ah, jeez. That's super weird. So, it's like, it's like it actually is information just left over in the frame buffer. Um, that's super weird. Maybe, hold on. Maybe I can get around that by rid of you? Does my coroutine do anything else over? It does. That's our cooldown, okay. So if I get if I get rid of that, will that actually fix my jitter problem? Huh. I doubt it. I'm actually willing to bet that I have that in there. Um, because I need that frame to to know if um, if our width and height are correct. So if I'm right there, um, we're actually going to see more overlap. It's not great. No great. Crap. Uh, we'll see. See if I get angry. I hope not. No! I knew it. Yep. Crap. So I do... <sighs> See, this, this is one of those frame buffer things I was talking about. I need a frame. I have to have a frame where I... I, I... I have to have a frame between when I set the text in a label and when I try to calculate the rect um, for that label. Uh, because if I don't have that frame, then Unity doesn't update those values correctly, and when I perform my check, I'm performing them with incorrect values, and therefore I will get overlap, even though my check returned that there was no overlap. That's because technically at the time my check happened, there was no overlap, but the immediate next frame, there is. Um, so, this doesn't work. 
Yield return. Null. So we'll just wait for the end of that frame. Um, geez, that's incredibly frustrating. Um, set our canvas renderer to be zero to start. And then we should yield an entire two frames, which should give me ample time. Ample time to actually position myself, but it doesn't. That's what makes it so infuriating. Um, just out of curiosity, I want to know if I like triple that or quadruple that up. So if I have a four frame delay, if I will still get that. If I do, um, then... <sighs> I, 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 I don't know. I actually don't know what I can do here. Because um, this has to be done in a coroutine, not late update, which means that I can't really rely on that. But I, see, the, the wait for end of frame should fix that problem. Because the wait for end of frame should basically let everything draw that needs to draw, and then I could position them a little bit better but that doesn't so let's go ahead and do battle nope all oh, right i was gonna say oh no while loop no it was just a the debug break um so we, we still got the stutter uh, so no matter how many extra frames i do here this is not actually gonna it's not actually gonna help me um <sighs> could I do to help to stop this? Um, um, God, I'm honestly not sure. Because I have to, I have to have it positioned at some, some point in space. And then I have to have it set its attack uh, message, and I need a frame after that. But after I have that frame, then I can calculate things. Um, the problem is that it just it, it just seems to still be visible for one frame, no matter what I do. <sighs> I don't know what a good I don't know what a good counter measure for that is. Because um, that's kind of the last the last thing for me to make combat feel a little bit better, um, or rather a somewhat moderate amount better. Um, that stuttering really brings things down. It really makes it a lot, lot harder on the eyes to see, um, which means that it's not okay. Um, could I just freaking disable it? <laughs> I don't want to do that. Uh, that would be terrible. Um, could I independently do the fade coroutine? Um, let's see, find all references. Both in Both in start attack. That doesn't really work. Wait, hold on. We're just doing label dot can. Oh. That could be our problem. Interesting. Um, so part of our problem... No, that doesn't make sense. Can I transform? Right. Um, so I think part of our problem is that... I'm not actually doing an alpha fade on the background for the um, the label. So that 
could be why it's popping up, I suppose. Um, that's kind of weird. Um, but I don't, I don't doubt that that's what's happening. If that's the case, maybe I should just do something like this. Canvas group. Um, group. Uh, let's go ahead and go down here. Let's see. Paid coroutine. So let's change that to just say group dot um, alpha is equal to t, except I can't spell t. Um, so basically, we're going to replace all of this equal to fade curve dot evaluate for t. And it's all good. Same thing here. Do that. Okay, I think that will work. Um, and then I suppose at the very end here, just just for for good measure. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yes, I think that's right. Um, probably should do something like this again. So if fade out is greater than zero, that means that we want our t to be one, otherwise it's gonna be zero. Um, yeah, that should be fine. All right, um, let's go ahead and boot that up. I'm kind of curious. So that might solve our problem. Since maybe the problem is that it was fading the background in in the exact same frame. Um, but we weren't actually fading it in from zero alpha. This, this, At the very least, this should make it less apparent because it means that our background, instead of being solid opaque, it would be mostly transparent for those first frames. Um, so let's see, we have basic attack, I think is what we want. Um, let's see, canvas group. Let's go ahead and add a canvas group here. Uh, don't need to do any of that. There we go. Um, magic attack. Just go ahead and copy this. Copy component. Component is new. Copy that in. Pressure attack. Paste component is new. Same thing. And sewer troll, same thing. All right. Um, let's try that. I'm, I'm optimistic. Hit. really hope that this works. I will be very happy if it does. Um, and very unhappy if it doesn't. Uh-oh. Oh, wait, no, never mind. The, the debug break. I'm actually not noticing that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that debug break. Uh, attack pattern. Debug break. Because even if even if it doesn't fix it, the fact that for that first frame that it would be jumping around, its alpha is actually zero, that essentially fixes it, um, which basically means I don't have to worry about it. Uh, hmm. All right, let's try this again. Camera movement. Our troll staring blankly at you. All right, I don't need to actually type. Yeah. 
Well, that works out pretty well. Um, so that, that fixes our problem. Then. So now we have nice um, fading in for attacks and um, combo labels. We fix the stuttering that occurs from attack combos. Uh, we have proper ordering for our characters and combo labels and attack labels. Um, God, it was just a bunch of combat stuff today. What else did we do today? Um, it was all those wonderful, wonderful, uh, like minor things that just make make combat feel kind of cumbersome right now. There's also another thing that I need to do that I can't really show you because I don't have items right now, but the items list um, has solid backgrounds, um, which kind of make it look stripey, and I need to fix that. Um, that's a that's a relatively minor thing. Um, actually, I can probably fix that right now. Uh, let's go to UI, view container, combat. Let's go ahead and grab this. Um, options, input. Okay, one of these things has it. Um, nope, right, can't do that. Um, oh, right, I guess it's a submenu. Okay, that's fair. Uh, item selection, there we go. This is most likely a button, yep, cool. Let's go ahead and stop playing. So basically, I just need to change this normal color from a solid black to a completely transparent black. That's pretty much it. Um, pressed color, I guess we'll keep it at solid black. And all this does is basically make it so that the um, the label itself is the only thing that really makes it distinguished. Let's see, make that all good. None. Okay. Um, which means that instead of having having solid black lines for all of my buttons, I would just have, it, lo it would look like nothing, but when you go over to hover over it, it would fade to a different color to make it stand out more. All right. Um, that, <laughs> that might be a pretty good place to stop for the night, actually. Um, I guess real quick, what we can do is, da, 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 da. view combat. Go ahead and select. Ooh. Really? Dang it. I hate it when I do that. Ah, there we go. I like to put the script field on normally, but apparently I didn't for combat view. Um, let's go ahead and go up to combat view editor. Um, so we're going to get rid of some things. First off, combat label area. Get rid of view. Um, get rid of player combo backgrounds. Combo labels. Label scale and color. Get rid of view. Cool. Gotta. Ah, excuse me. Hate it when I have to sneeze on dev stream. Get rid of you. Get rid of you, and we should be good. Oh, I can get rid of this entire thing, can't I? Ta da. That's a nice, uh, nice trimming down. Go ahead and save that. Take a look at the new editor. Oh, and you know what I also can do? Draw the uh, script field. So custom editor utility dot draw script field serialized object. There we go. It's just very convenient to have your scripts um, have a field there, like Unity does. Um, mostly so that if you ever need to edit the script, you can just double click on that instead of having to go up to the gear and say edit script or if you want to find the script instead of having to search for it you can just click on it there um so let's see view combat so now you can see the script field um and yep there we go oh that's interesting item select menu is just kind of randomly there that's not weird at all um <laughs> huh. Weird. It's just it's just like randomly there. Alright. Um I kind of feel like I should fix that. Uh, let's go to draw combat inspector. 
Uh, let's see. Options, hints. Yeah, it's just, like, right there. Um, so we're going to get rid of that. Oh, wow. That tells you how old this is. Oh, wow. Ha. If it has GUI content after the uh, property field, then usually that means this is a fairly old script. Uh, usually. Not always, but usually. Okay. So now we should just have the item select menu pop down below that. But uh, All right. I think that's... Uh-oh. Did I accidentally delete something? What did I do? What did I do? Oh, an extra. There we go. Um, oh, and apparently I didn't even move it. Get rid of you. There you go. Makes it at least a little bit less hideous to have that random thing in the middle there. Um, yeah. So, I think that's actually a pretty good place to stop for the night. Um, we got basically all of the combat stuff that I wanted to do tonight. We didn't, we didn't get to do any of the audio stuff I was thinking about doing, but I suppose that's fine for now. Um, some of the stuff I was planning on doing probably couldn't easily be done right now anyway. Um, there's some prep work that I would need to do for it. Um, but with that... Combat is pretty much in a good position, uh, at least for the next thing that I need it to be ready for. Um, so in, let's see, it's Tuesday. In about a week and a half, I'm going to be going up to Canada for wordplay. I was going to type troll. Uh, which is a interactive fiction, text-based adventure type thing that happens up there. It's just like a little gathering. Um, but there are a couple of people going to that that I would like to talk to, and I would like to be able to show them my game um, and ask for feedback on it. Uh, so I would like to have a you know semi-polished build ready to go for that. Um, worst comes to worst, I can always go back to um, what I had for the West Virginia Game Developers Expo. But you know it's always nice to have some some minor polish um, over that because there's always bugs that I find at conventions, or rather the players find and then I take note of. Um, but yeah, I mean this is this is a pretty good place to stop for the night because um, we have our we have our gradual fade in on everything. Um, we no longer have overlap. It's oh that was interesting. I should have got a perfect there unless I missed one. Did I miss one? I mean I got six, which is on the lower end of what you can normally get. I think I must have missed one. I'm gonna try to get a perfect. Okay, making making sure that perfect still worked. I thought for a second that critical was like super imposing over it or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, combat is looking a lot more polished now than it used to. Um, I do, I do want to figure out something to make the combo labels feel less like they're not part of the world. <laughs> wow. I won by virtue of not typing. Um, I feel like I should make that a, an achievement or something. Um, but aside from that, I'm pretty happy with how combat is right now. Um, so it's, it should be impossible to have overlap now, which means that it should be much less confusing. Um, although, that's interesting. I have some weird... Oh, that's always been? Huh, I guess so. Weird. I honestly didn't think that's what it was. All right. Also, that's weird. What the heck is... Huh. Okay. Well. I guess I need to do some... PUVing of that stuff. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good place to stop for the night. Um, so, any announcements? Not off the top of my head. Um, should be back on Thursday nights. Thursday, I'm thinking we're going to do, do some more audio stuff. Well, not more audio stuff, some audio refactoring. And that will probably take us most of that day. Actually, it'll probably take us all of that day. Um, specifically, I'm thinking about re, um, refactoring uh, my music manager, 
or my music player, um, which is basically I'm going to redo the entire system for how music is played because um, it's kind of it's kind of weird. Um, it was definitely an early on thing, and when I, I remember doing when I did it, I was super proud of myself, but it's not the best now. Um, so I would like to to take another crack at it to make it feel a lot more. Um, I'll just make it easier to use in general and make it not nearly as obtuse to try and do it. So um, that's that's what we're probably going to be taking a look at on Thursday, um, unless something pops up between now and then. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty good place to stop for the night. So um, as always, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Thank you.